Ha! Hey everyone, Hassan here. Welcome to the world of Ha. Today I have a very special video for you. This is a quick look at the iPad OS 13 beta that just released today from Apple. So uh, a couple things that I want to get out of the way. First, I'm not feeling well. Um, I have a bit of a cough. My voice is not 100% there, so I apologize in advance if there's some sniffles or coughing or whatever. I'm sorry. I just wanted to film this video as soon as possible. Uh, second, I have a developer account, so I was able to get to the beta. Do not ask me how to get the beta. Um, if you're a developer, you know how to get it. If you're not a developer, then you shouldn't be getting the beta. Wait till the public release, I believe, in July. So don't ask me. I'm not going to answer those questions in the comments about how to get the beta. This is a quick walkthrough of some of the highlights of new features for the iPad, because Apple has now split up iOS on the iPad, and it's not iOS anymore, it's iPad OS, uh, because there's some enhancements that are iPad only, which are really exciting. Uh, so I'm just going to highlight a couple different things. So this is not a comprehensive video by any means, but let's just jump right in. First, First thing that you're gonna see right here is there's a, a new um, home screen with some widgets right here. So normally this is what it looks like and they actually are able to fit in more icons than before, which is nice. Uh, but here it is. Uh, if you rotate the iPad, so if you're in, in this mode, then uh, you don't have that home screen. If you qu keep sliding over, it just sort of pops up like this. Um, but it, it's not a part of the home screen. It has to be in uh, uh, landscape mode like this and then it becomes a part of the, the home screen on the side. And so what you can do is you can actually pin, I think up to two it seems like, uh, widgets right at the top, and then you just slide to get the rest. So when I go to the bottom and edit my widget screen, I have a list of widgets that I can choose from, and then I can basically decide, so maybe instead of the weather, I want batteries to be pinned right at the top. So these are the pinned ones, and it looks like, you know, once I try and put more than that, it doesn't let me, so it seems like it's only up to two. Um, and then I hit done, and I have, I have those two pinned, so you'll see when I swipe down, those are the two that always remain there, even when I unlock the phone. There you have it. Um, so it's kind of cool, kind of convenient. You can decide what you want. I can have my quick access to settings or whatever it is. Um, really, really nice and handy. So the new home screen on iPad with, with widgets. Um, but the other thing that you might notice is uh, we have dark mode. So let me go into the settings here. And I believe it's under display and brightness. Yep, so you have light and dark. So here's your classic light mode that you all are very familiar with, right? But now you can change it to dark mode. And so everything, um, you know, has this, this nice new sort of display. So uh, let's pull up one or two quick little apps and just show you what dark mode looks like. One being Hera's uh, Reminders um, with a new view. This is also an updated Reminders app. By the way, throughout this video, you're going to notice a lot of things being blacked out. Um, I just, you know, it has like names of family and friends, different things. I just don't want to, you know, get a lot of that personal information out there. So I'm, I'm going to be blacking out a lot of things in this video just as an FYI. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, but there's that. Then you have the calendar app as well, which has got this this you know nice new view, which is which is pretty cool. So I, I like that. Um, you have so let's open up uh, Safari real quick. So Safari, you kind of just have an updated view at the top. Um, but otherwise nothing too, too crazy different. Um, so yeah, so dark mode is, is present throughout a lot of these, uh, apps, which is, which is pretty nice to have. So if you're a fan of dark mode, there you go. It's finally here with iOS 13 and iPad OS 13 as well. Uh, so then the iPad, right, can do multitasking. So let's say I'm in Safari and I want to open up Twitter, right? So you can always slide over and you can do this where you can embed the app side by side, right? Or you can do this where you just drag the, the app up on top and now you can slide it over, you know, whichever way that you want. Um, so that's, uh, that's not new. Sorry, it's weird with a camera in front of my face to try and do this. There we go. Um, so that part has always has been there with iPad uh, with a recent release or something. I can't remember how long ago it was. But now what you can do is let's say I want to, um, let's say I'm doing this, right? And I'm also then bringing in uh, notes. And I have notes right here over to the side. But I want to quickly go back to uh, Twitter. Instead of having to slide it over again, what you can do now that I've opened it up once before, I just slide up from the bottom here and I get this little view where I can now jump to Twitter real quick. Or, you know, maybe maybe I have another thing open. Maybe I have... Um, is Apple Music another one? Yes, it is. So maybe I have Apple Music up right here so I can swipe up and jump to my 
uh, notes to Twitter, uh, whatever it is, super quick and easy, uh, which is which is very nice. So I do like that. So that's the the new enhancements to um, to the slide overview. Then there's split view. So in in the past with the iPad, they added the ability to do a split view where you could um, have two um, Safari tabs side by side, right? But um, what they've now done is not just in Safari, in, in a lot of other apps, uh, and I assume third parties will hopefully be able to update and do this, but let's say I'm in my notes, right? What I can do is I can drag a note that I have over to the other side, and now I have two notes windows side by side, which is super cool. Um, and then, of course, I can still do all the same. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, so I have my notes side by side, and then... Uh, bring in my, my Twitter and have that hovering up above if I want to, or, you know, you can really get crazy with all the multitasking, but now you can have two apps side by side, which is, which is pretty handy. So, um, that's a little quick demo of that. Um, the other thing that I want to demo is some enhancements to the Apple Pencil functionality. So, um, this is the first generation Apple Pencil, but, you know, obviously these features will work with the newer version as well. Um, but what you can actually now do is, let's say I'm in Safari, and I want to um, take a screenshot of, uh, of, of this here. So before, you could push the, the two buttons, and you'd get like this little snapshot view, and then you click it open, and you can you know, edit it and all that. I don't know why it's upside down, but um, it's a beta. It's buggy, right? But now, what you can actually do is, from the corner, the bottom corner right here, I can just swipe in, boom. I'm immediately in my screen. Maybe I want to zoom in on, on something specific here. Um, and then I also have the, the um, again, it's, it's a little bit buggy. So there we go. I have my little uh, markup features right here where I can now highlight something or, or you know, draw or do whatever I want to do. I can mark up right here. And right from here, I can now share uh, directly to where I want. I can message, mail, Twitter, whatever it is. And this is the new share sheet as well which allows you to quickly share to specific contacts. Um, you can airdrop, you can do a bunch of stuff, save to files. There's a lot of really, really cool things that you can do right from here. So it's even quicker than having to push the two buttons. So if you have the Apple Pencil, nice and easy. This actually works anywhere. Let's say I'm in the home screen, boom, swipe in. I can now mark this up, whatever I wanna do, and send it off very easy, um, which, is, which is super nice. Uh, another enhancement, um, is, and I'm going to pull this up here. Um, let's see, do I have it open? I don't know if I have it open already. Um, I'm going to try and open something. Let's say I want to download something, right? So, um, let's say, uh, I want to download, um, uh, a video. Before, this is a perfect example because I, I wanted to watch some Super Sentai, and I had to go to my MacBook and download it and save it to my iCloud drive so I can watch it on my iPad. Now I can download it directly from here, which is great. So as an example, I'm going to open up um, a download link here and let's hit download. This may take a second to download, um, so I'll just let it run right here. Um, but what's going to happen is once it's done, there's going to be a new icon that pops up in the corner that is for a download manager. So this new download manager icon uh, will will allow for um, some some great new um, uh, flexibility in having to basically you can manage things directly from here. There's also USB support, USB thumb drive support, SD card support. I have a lightning adapter here, so I, I don't have a connector to do it. Um, but look, okay, so download right. So I hit download, and look what pops up right here. It's a native download manager directly right in Safari, which is pretty amazing. So that is awesome, um, which is which is super handy. And I wonder, does it show up in files? I don't actually know. I didn't even check and see where, where it's even found. Um, yes, it does. So if you go to your iCloud drive, there's a downloads folder, and boom, there's your download right there. Um, now this is a zip file, so I actually don't know. Um, oh, actually when you click on the zip file, wow, look, it actually is unzipping the file right here in my in my iPad uh, in in the iCloud Drive, which is super super cool. So basically, built-in file manager and download manager into the iPad, which makes it very very nice and easy. Um, so I love that. Another enhancement that came to iPad 
is, let's go right into here. Uh, this is actually how I track all the videos that I need to be filming, I'm editing, recording, etc. Let's say I want to copy and paste something, right? Before, what you had to do is you had to like click in here, right? Then you had to hold your finger down and like try and select the word, right? And then you get the thing that pops up and you hit copy. It's kind of a little cumbersome. Now, let's say I want to copy something, right? Here's what I do. All I got to do is just um, drag my finger across. Hold on one second. If I can make sure I'm doing it right. There we go. Um, so you just drag your finger across and uh, to highlight. So let me try this again. All right, ready? Let's... Oh, you have to hold down for a second. That's what I wasn't doing. Okay, it's a beta. It's new. I'm still playing around with it. So you just hold your finger down for a second, and then you just swipe across, and very easy, and you can adjust. So let's say I want to copy that. Instead of having to hit copy, you can actually use three fingers, swipe inwards, and you get a little pop-up that says copy. So now, how do you paste? Well, just click where you want it, and just three fingers outwards. Oops and it pastes. There you go, very easy. Let's say you wanna undo it, three fingers swipe to the side, done. So I can paste, undo, easy. Um, so it's actually uh, pretty handy. Also, the other thing is, let's say I wanna uh, edit something, instead of having to type in here and try and get the, eye, um, the little cursor to go exactly where I want it to go, it's kind of a pain, right? Now when you see the cursor, you just drag the cursor. So I just touch the cursor and move it. It's so easy. Um, so that actually works pretty well, which is, which is very, very handy. Um, I know that you could, at least on the iPhone, I haven't tried it. You could like, I think it was like, hold your finger down on here and do it, but right, you know, natively right on the cursor, you can just drag, which is, which is pretty great. So that's pretty helpful. Um, I do appreciate, uh, that functionality. Um, also on the iPad, sometimes typing like this is really cumbersome, right? Like I have the iPad in my hands. I just want to use one finger or something. So what you can do is pinch with two fingers and it minimizes the keyboard. And you can move this around however you like. Um, but let's say I'm right here and you can type, right? This is nice, right? You can type, but now you can swipe. This is super, nope, that's not what I wanted. There you go. Um, so the swiping functionality is not necessarily new to Apple devices. You could install third party keyboards like Swift Key and Swipe and those that would allow you to do it. But now it's built in native to iOS. You don't have to install any other keyboards or anything. It's built directly in. Um, I say iOS, I'm pretty sure it's iOS, but this is iPad OS. I gotta get used to saying iPad OS. Um, but very, very handy. And then, you know, once you're ready to um to get rid of this or to move the keyboard back to how it was, just pinch back to to full size. So pinch in, pinch out. There you go. Very easy. And let's uh um highlight and delete. So there you go. Um, so that's also pretty handy. Um, the other thing that I want to show is, let's go into Apple Music for a second, and the cool thing is, uh, by the way, this is the, the, the new look for Apple Music, um, so it definitely is, is pretty sweet. But let's say I want to um, play something here, and I'm going to try and keep the volume low so that the video doesn't get flagged. Um, but let's play some Pentatonix uh, music because they're amazing. So it's playing, but uh, what you can actually do, and this might be a little hard to hear, but I can push this little icon right here, and it pulls up the lyrics and syncs it, which is great. So I'm going to stop it so I don't get, you know, copyright flagged or whatever. But um, yeah, so again, you can really sync up the lyrics to, to where you want, uh, which is super cool. And so, and I can scroll through and click where I want and it goes right there. So this might have been available in the past with other alternatives and stuff, but Right now, it's it's built in natively, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, there's also a handoff um, now to let's let's try this again. So let me play it, and then let me try and switch to my home pad here. Home pad, home pod. There you go. It's playing. Let's go back to the iPad, and it's back here. So 
uh, now you have handoff to the HomePod, which is also great. So if you're listening to something on here, you can just push that. It sends the audio over to your HomePods if you have those, and then you can send them right back. So lots of little, little enhancements. Some of this stuff is coming to iOS 13 with iPhones and everything, um, but the um, the things that are not are some of the multitasking features, the home screen here, um, some of that Apple Pencil stuff. Uh, so some of those features are exclusive to iPad OS. So I wanted to give an overview of just a variety of different things that I thought were kind of cool and also were, were sort of our first looks here. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, just wanted to do this quick little overview. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. Don't ask me for the beta. I'm not giving you any, any links or anything. Um, you should know how to get it if you are allowed to get it. Um, otherwise, wait for the public release in, in July for the public beta or the final release of this in the fall. So uh, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Take care and I will see you later.